All right, so today we're gonna to be working on the Ferris wheel, which is really just made up of two pieces. We've got the wheel itself and then the stand. It's easiest if you just pick one and make that first and then the other one and then we can put them back together. So to start with, I'm gonna do the wheel and it is made of several pieces to give it a lot of extra strength. Um, I already have one assembled. So in the end, this is what it's gonna look like. But the back of it, are these two pieces that are kind of a extra strength, just to kind of give a little bit of reinforcement. I'll end up gluing those two together. And then this one is the next layer, which is basically gonna make up whatever you wanna use for the lights. So we did a yellow, and I'm gonna end up gluing it here, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then the spokes, we did in the green. We'll glue that down. And then we have the outer blue. And because we tried as much as we could to make it perfectly symmetrical, but we couldn't quite get exact. It's a tiny bit off. So to make sure that yours is lined up, you'll notice that I've got these little lines on every single layer. So when I glue it together, I can make sure to have those lined up. But on the blue one, I didn't want to mark it on here because I'm going to be able to see it. So instead I marked it on the back. So I just need to remember this is the back, got my line, and I'll end up matching it up. So to glue it, I'm going to just put these over here. I've got my two layers that I'm starting with. And it doesn't really matter what order you start in as long as they go together where these are the back. If you want, you could print some, cut out some kind of a decorative um, paper if you want because you're going to be able to see it just a little bit through the other side. I'm gonna, I don't want to go too much, but I also want to make sure that this is really well secured. By having so many layers, the wheel is really strong. And we've got the same kind of layer system for the base, which means that the Ferris wheel can actually hold something. Um, we don't have a lot of layers for each of the buckets, but if you use a nice heavy cardstock, you can actually put things, kind of like little candies or treats or something like that, you can put into each of the little buckets. And it shouldn't warp. I mean, I wouldn't store it that way for months or anything, but they should easily make it through a party and then some. So, I've got my glue. I've got my line. I've got my line again. So now I'm going to line it up. I'm going to make sure that my holes are as lined up as I can absolutely get them because I have a wooden dowel that's going to go through there to support the buckets. Then this goes through to keep it on the base. So when I have all of it done, or even between, I might actually just put it under something heavy, go ahead and let it sit, and let that sit and make sure it's good and flat, because if it dries warped at all, your wheel is warped and it won't turn as easily. So I'm going to do these two. Just keep track of where my lines are at. And then this one is a bit more of a challenge. I'm going to just run a line around the outside and then again on the inside. There we go. And if you have, if your glue will allow you to, if you have time, you can put some between the dots, but you don't have to. Um, we've been doing it just in rows on either side, and it's been quite strong. There we go. So, I've got my line, and I have my line. Oh, oops. 
There we go. I'm gonna fix my bottom just a little bit. There we go. Make sure it's all pressed down. And again, you can take it and put it under something heavy. That one's nice and flat. And if I just give that a nice press, I'll let them sit underneath for quite a while, actually, once I'm all done, um, just to make sure that it does stay nice and flat and isn't warped. So what I can do now is go ahead and glue, because I want this as the, the back, and go ahead and glue this down. And again, I have my line marked here and there. It just helps to keep me oriented every time if I double check where those lines are at. I do want to make sure to get some glue around that hole. All right. Go like this. Nice. Okay. And you will not be videoed, so you can go ahead and take your time and really make sure that this is exactly where you want it to be. Um, especially if your glue is a little forgiving and takes a minute to set up. All right, so I've got my line here, and I've got my line here, which means this slightly bigger hole goes on this open hole here. Can't probably can't see it, but here's the line. So you've got a little hole, and then the big one. So I'm going to glue it down just like that, and it's going to make the outer portion of my wheel. Just an outside row. And this layer is mostly just decorative, so it's not really doing much for the structure. So if it's not super covered in glue, it's fine. Got to find my line again. There it is. So then. Let's Start at the bottom. There we go. If I get those two lined up, the rest should all fall into place. And there we go. So I've already done it with this one. I've got this one here. So I'm going to place this one underneath and let it spend some time being pressed to get it nice and flat. The other part of the wheel are these buckets. So I'm going to go ahead and make those buckets. They're all made of just one piece, just one cut flat piece. And then we've got four of these little circles, two on the inside, two on the outside, just to give a little reinforcement because our wooden dowel is going to come through here. And if I put anything in my bucket, I want to be able to support it a little bit and have some extra strength so that these aren't tearing. So we have eight of these buckets, and they just go together real simple. Add a little glue here. I can even do two tabs at the same time if I want. And it is easier to put these little rings on first. Uh, it's easier to get them lined up just right. There we go. the other side. And 
there you go you have a bucket and you're going to end up making eight of them we chose to do all of them in red with little blue circles um, but you can do any color combination if you want you could cut out a shape if you wanted to do like a star or if it's a birthday and they're turning five you could put a little five on the buckets whatever it is that you want to end up doing um, so that is just the beginning of the wheel I need to take my wooden dowel I picked this up at the craft store it's just a little piece of wood um, this one is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and then I took some acrylic paint and I painted it gold. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut each each of these needs to have a dowel to run through it. And so I'm going to cut this in two and a half inch lengths so that it can fit into my Ferris wheel. So I need eight of those. All right, so I have cut these into two and a half inch pieces. This is the 3 16th inch dowel I got at the craft store, and then I used a gold shiny acrylic paint to give it some color. Um, and then to put them with the wheel and our buckets, we have these little end caps. They're made of three circles. Uh, we chose to cut two of them out of just the cardstock. And then the third one that's going to be seen out of a nice kind of shiny gold um, to put them together. All of these are exactly the same. It's just the two cardstock ones. And if you want, you can just do all three in cardstock or whatever you want. I've got my two cardstock. And then my third one I did in gold. And that's it. That's all they are, those three. I've got 16 of them, one for either side of the bucket. And what I'm going to do to start with is I am going to take one of my dowels, set this aside, because I want to use hot glue for this instead, just because it sets a little faster and I think it might be a little better for this than my other glue. I'm going to put a tiny bit right in the center there, doesn't take much, and then I'm going to put it Right in the middle of my end cap. If I'm brave, I can try to get rid of some of the extra that squishes out. I don't really need to get too much of it. So, and that's it. That's what I'm going to do to all of them. Excuse me. So that I can have them ready. Make sure I put it on what I want to be the back side because that gold side is going to be visible. It's going to be easily seen. Um, in this version I did it in silver, so I kind of like being able to see it, but the back of it you don't see anything. Um, so you can just use whatever scrap paper you have laying around. There we go. You can do it with all eight of them, or you can do four and start putting your wheel together and then do the other four. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to move these aside because for me, trying to keep all the little wooden dowels sticking up, it's easier to do four buckets at a time. Um, if you want to do all eight in one go, go for it. Um, but what I did, what I find easiest for me, is to put my little dowel through here and put one through here and then through there and over here so now I'm going to take my buckets and slide them on there will be just a little bit of extra sticking up which is perfect because then that gives the buckets a little bit of space between them and the wheel when you're all done the buckets themselves are two inches wide. That's why we need the two and a half, so they have a little bit of room to wiggle. So, then I'm going to place this over top, making sure the out part is facing out on both directions. 
There we go. Now, I'm just come over here, put a little bit of glue. And place that down. I'll do that with all four of them. There we go. Try not to have my glue strings going everywhere. Try to clean those up as I go. And I can actually move this. There we go. I'm gonna let that cool. Like I said, you could do all eight in one go if you want. I just find it easier to do four and then four. Um, but really is just a personal preference on that. So I'll put that one there. Oops. Do you want that to dry straight up and down if possible? It's going to let it uh, move around easier if it's not at an angle. The more straight you can make these, the better off you'll be with getting your buckets to move. Uh, after I cut my wooden dowels, I actually took a little bit of sandpaper and rubbed them over it real quick. Nothing major, but just enough to get rid of any little bits of wood that could be sticking out on me. I think I could have sanded this one a little extra, but it'll be fine. There we go. So, I'll set those aside. Oh. Hot glue drives me crazy with all the little glue string things it does. All right, because it is already glued in place a little bit, it's a little trickier to get these in. But like I said, I liked it better this way. But if you want to do it differently, a little different order, that's fine. Put that through there. And then I can put that through there. Yep, I got it through the hole. Make sure you get it through this hole here and you don't miss because once these are glued in place, it's going to be real hard. Oops. Once it, these are glued in place, it's going to be real hard to fix that if you miss one side of your bucket. Last one. There we go. And there we go. I'll be gentle so that, since that one's fresh. As you can see, if we hold it upright, they should all be able to move kind of freely there. Um, have to make sure we're good. All right, and that is the wheel. Um, 
I will have to cut another dowel for the centerpiece, but first we're going to go ahead and put together the base. All right, so the second half of putting together the Ferris wheel, now that we have the wheel itself done, is this base piece. And it's just the triangle, a uh, rectangle bottom, and then the same triangle structure on the other side. And again, we have a bunch of layers to make it nice and strong. Um, and what we're going to do to start with is we have these pieces that have the fold line on them, three panels that go across the bottom, and then these are on the end. Um, on this one, we actually did it in blue, but it just kind of helps keep these two side pieces up and together. Um, so again, just like the wheel, we have a little mark to make sure that these pieces are exactly lined up. And what we're gonna do is take one of our rectangles. I am going to fold along there. Get a nice good fold. And I'm gonna do the same over here. And you'll see that on the bottom right for each of these is that mark. And I'm gonna put that face down. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue these together. Just add some glue on this tab here. Oh, my glue is clogged. Huh. There we go. And each of these rectangular pieces are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. Um, there we go. I just want to make sure that's lined up. And this can go vertical. The ends are square. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Give it an extra press. And now I'm going to do the same over here. We have a good hold, everything's flat, square. So this is gonna be the inside of my Ferris wheel. You can see this is pretty floppy right now. So what we're gonna do is I've already done this one where it's got several layers. It's got three all glued together. So we're gonna do that. This will go on one side. I'm gonna do that for the other side. And again, all of them have that little mark on the bottom. So I just glue and stack them up. They're all the same. The order of them is not going to matter. If you want to do this one here, cut in maybe a decorative pattern paper or something like that, um, you can do that. Just make sure to keep in mind that the uh, line needs to be on the bottom right when facing out. And if I had more time, um, and what you should probably do is before you fold these up um, in a little bit, you might want to put all the panels on there and then just let it lay flat for a while. Um, put it under some books or a couple of uh, paper packs or something just to help make sure that your layers of paper dry nice and flat. Because if they dry warped, it's going to interfere with the wheel and how the uh, Ferris wheel structure holds. Okay. 
there. And you can go a little slower and maybe do a little better gluing job than I am. But there we go. Lined up. There. So these two are each three paper pieces deep. So they've got a fair amount of strength to them. And what we're going to do is take this, turn it over, and I am going to glue them on here. And then over here, I'm going to want to glue one of my other rectangles here to cover up those tabs and make it nice and strong. And this is the point, once they're all glued down, that you could put it underneath of something flat and heavy for a while to uh, make sure that everything is really good and straight. Um, I like to put the center panel down first, um, but you could put the other ones first if you want. Make sure you get the edges really good. There we go. This can fold up. Covered. And the third one, what I'm going to do, but first I'll go ahead and get these in position. I glue them down just like that. And again, I want these lines to be lining up. really need to make sure that circle is lined up as best as I can possibly get it because that's going to allow my dowel to come through. And the better it can go through, the better off everything's going to move. So, here we go. That one's in place. Now I'm going to go ahead, again, making sure they can be lined up, and do the other side. circle. There we go. And what we're going to do is make sure it still goes straight up and down. Just to make sure everything's good. All right. So I'm going to slide this under here. Just a moment. Give it a good push. All right. And with yours, I would suggest putting it under for a while. Alright, so this piece, I can either put it in right now, but because these are a different color, I don't really want those polka dots showing through later. Um, so I'm in, going to go ahead and put these pieces in place. Got some glue on this long one. And I'm going to make sure to get it lined up square there, also square on this end. I don't want it sticking out. I also don't want it too far in. There we go. Do the same thing for the other end. There. Yeah, 
See, nice and lined up there. Okay, flatten those out. And now I'm gonna glue this panel right there to cover up those tabs, but also to give the bottom just a little bit more strength. And we wanted to try to make this as robust as possible so that you can use it as a party centerpiece and put some stuff in the buckets. My three kids have all played with our practice run and it's actually held up really well. So all the layers are kind of paying off. And there we go. Those will be able to fold up. These can all nicely fold up. So before I put these attached to here, I'm going to turn it back over to the outside. And I'm going to make my decorative panel. So on the outside, I've got this piece here that I'm going to glue over here. So that way I have the side all decorated and done. But first I need to put the blue on here and then make the feet. So to do that, I've got this little panel here. Add some glue. that lined up with the circle and there we go and then for the feet they're just these little kind of goofy triangles here uh, I'm gonna have the tabs go back like that to attach them but they cut out there's four of them and they kind of cut out like this so I'm gonna go along and fold every one of these lines Give them a real strong fold. Then with this paper, the glue doesn't hold as well. But if you're using cardstock or something that it doesn't have this shiny finish, it'll should hold a little faster than this stuff does. So get that glued in place. Try not to get glue everywhere like I tend to. Go ahead and go a little slower than me and be a little neater. Add glue over here. I'm going to fold it around and tuck it behind. Because this little shape here is going to go on the bottom. It's going to sit like this. Add my glue here, and then also fold that in real good and add some glue on there. Fold that over, get those two tabs in place, and hold on to it for just a minute. Let that glue get set up. Make sure I've got a good fit hold there. There we go. And then you can fold these two tabs out like that. Let's set this aside so that glue can kind of dry a little more and use this one. I'm going to take this and add some glue to the tab here and to this tab over here. And I'm going to slide it underneath so that way those tabs are behind. I'm going to be attached to my decorative panel, but they're hidden, so we don't have to see it. So you can see on this one, just got them glued back there. Go ahead and do this one now. I do want to make sure that it's nice and snug. I don't want to have it down here like that because then it's not lined up and it's not quite as flat along the bottom. So I just want to give it a gentle push to make sure it's all the way up into that corner. And there we go. We have our feet in place. I'll let that one dry and show you on this one here. We do. Again, you can't quite see it on this one. 
because I didn't put a line on it, otherwise it won't be covered up, but there is that little line there. And again, line it up. It's on both of them, so you can make sure you get them straight. Turn it over and add my glue. Again, I want to make sure that that circle at the top is really well placed. All these layers, I don't want to have any of them really interfering with that center dowel that's going to go through there to hold on to the wheel. Excuse me. Here we go. Give it a good press. I can't put this one under something heavy. And you can go a lot slower and really get over top of it and make sure that it's all square and straight. Good. That'll work. I can always test it. It sits flat. The feet aren't causing any trouble. It'll kind of give them a little stability from side to side so the Ferris wheel is a little less likely to tip over. Sure, I've got that just right. All right, so I've got that. It can sit upright like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these sides put in place. I'm going to fold them in. I'm going to just do one tab at a time so I can just get it, really focus on it and get it in the right position. I'm going to bring it up and glue it so that it lines up. I want it to line up right here. It's not in, it's not out, it's just kind of making a nice corner there. Once that glue is set, you might want to sit and hold it a little bit longer just to make sure that it's really strong. Come on over to this one. Add some glue to this tab. Reach in and hold it in place too. And now you have something to keep the sides of your Ferris wheel up. in position. There we go. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. There we go. Fold this one in. Add my glue and my four will be in place. All right, and now you have the base of the Ferris wheel complete. The next step, I'm going to set this aside for a moment, is I am going to take my wooden dowels. This one I cut at about three and a quarter inches, almost three and a half, somewhere in between, because uh, I need it to go be long enough to reach all the way through here and go across without going too far. If it sticks out too much, then it interferes with our little star that we're going to put on the outside. But we do want it to comfortably go across, and this way we know it's wider than what the wheel comes out to be, which should allow the wheel to move a little bit more freely. 
And just like with the buckets, we have the little end caps that we're going to make. Um, and these ones are also three pieces of paper thick, but for them I only cut them out in just the regular cardstock uh, because I'm going to end up covering them up, so I don't really need to worry about making them pretty. Um, these really will never be seen, so it doesn't really matter what color you end up using. And that's it. I got three thick. Make my other one. There we go. Okay. So now that we've got the uh, end caps put together, we're going to do the same as before. Just a little bit of glue on the end of our dowel. It's a little too much. Pop it in. Try to get rid of a little bit of that extra. It's all right. Ooh. Little runner strings of hot glue. Not my favorite. All right, so I have that. I'm gonna set it aside for just a moment. Let that cool off. And this can be a little bit tricky. I've got my wheel. I need to take it, put the dowel through there. I'm going to put it through the center of the wheel. And then I got to go across, get it through the center on the other side, and then out through there. Lay it down if I need to. This is why your paper needs to be lined up really well so you don't end up with something blocking you too much. And now I'm going to just put my end cap on. There we go. I have a Ferris wheel. But first, I am going to pull it out so that the base is out towards the edges there. The wheel, I'm actually going to pull on it real gentle so that it's towards the outside of each one of these dowels, which will give my buckets the maximum amount of space to allow them to move. There we go. So I can actually I'll keep it straight up and down, but I can move the Ferris wheel. I'm going to have to go through and clean up all my little hot glue strings. I uh, really hate that about hot glue, even if it is kind of convenient to use at times. So I'll have to fix that later. Just go through and pull them all off. But, isn't that nifty? Now what we're going to do is cover up these little end caps just to make them pretty. Um, take one of these little cover pieces. It's got a little fold line here and a fold line there. I'm gonna actually just take it and roll it around my pen here. So it will now fit over top of the end cap. Take my glue, put a little bit there. I can actually slide it next to or even just a touch behind if I want to. press it into place so that it's making contact with my paper. I don't want to glue it onto the end cap. It needs to be able to be separate because this needs to be able to move with the Ferris wheel. I don't want the star to get involved in that. So I'll let that sit for a second. Come along and glue the other side. All right. This is where it gets tricky and I don't have the right tool with me here right now. I just kind of fold it around and reach in and push that down. So, I don't know how well you can see that, but the uh, paper is looping around the end cap so that it's not interfering with anything there. Um, it's giving it a little bit of space. 
Now I can take my star, a little star here, put some glue right over here. and place my star. And there we go. And I have these cute little people and a popcorn cart that I'm actually going to use a couple little pop dots and uh, place them there so that we have some people on our Ferris wheel having a good day. And there you go. That is the Ferris wheel.